And with the end of winter, spring arrives. Join me, Jacob Cardenas, on a journey of discovery, exploring, and observing plants, animals, and insects. Created by Jacob Cardenas. The great state of Texas, also the second largest state in the U.S. To catch a glimpse of some of the many species of wildflowers Texas has to offer, one could simply take a drive down one of its many interstates or highways during the spring. The many species of plants and trees found here, in addition to the many species found on our planet, play an enormous role in our ecosystem. Through a process called photosynthesis, plants consume carbon dioxide, making the air safer for us to breathe. Also, different flowers and leaves are a food source for many different species of plant-eating animals. Of course, flowering plants need to reproduce, and to help them out with this task, we have the bees. Different species of honey-producing bees play a large role in a process called pollination. For flowering plants to reproduce, they must get their pollen from one flower to another flower. This is a task that honeybees do very well. Plants produce nectar that attracts bees and other insects to help out with the pollination process. Bees turn the nectar into honey, which is the bee's primary food source. Just look how much pollen stuck on this little guy's legs. Here is one of my personal favorites, the Texas Spiny Lizard. With a life expectancy of six to eight years, these reptiles can grow up to 12 inches in length. The habitat that the Texas Spiny Lizard enjoys is arboreal. This means that it'll find a good sized tree to turn into its home. The Texas Spiny Lizard scares easy, so once startled, it'll retreat to a high branch in the tree and remain there till it feels it's safe to come down. This species of lizard is insectivorous. Insectivorous means it eats a variety of different insects. Like all reptiles, the Texas spiny lizard is cold-blooded and requires the sun to help regulate its body temperature. This explains why, when reptiles are spotted, they always seem to be sunbathing. If found in the wild, the Texas spiny lizard can adapt to captivity well, but like all species found in the wild, it is recommended that they remain there so that this species of lizard can continue to be a thriving species here in South Texas. opinion, this species of insect greatly resembles a creature often seen in science fiction movies. 
You know the one where the alien creature comes from outer space, and when it removes its mask, it's got four large mandibles as part of its mouth structure. Difference being, this species isn't from outer space. The Pale Wind Scorpion. Shown here is a full-grown pregnant female measuring up to one and a quarter inches in length. A single female wind scorpion can produce a clutch of up to 50 eggs at a time. Judging by the size of this one, I think she's at maximum capacity and is ready to get her eggs in the ground. A female wind scorpion will search for a spot safe enough to dig a burrow to lay her eggs. Once the burrow is finished and her eggs are laid, she will stand guard for two weeks for them to hatch. Wind scorpions are carnivorous and very agile hunters, feeding on insects and small vertebrates. Once the younglings have all hatched, it'll be completely up to them to find food and fend for themselves. The wind scorpion is classified as an arachnid. This means that it's part of the same family as your everyday garden variety spiders. One noticeable difference between wind scorpions and other spiders is that wind scorpions have an extra pair of antenna-like legs called pedipalps. The pedipalps on the wind scorpion serve many different functions including water intake and sensory perception. All that hard work is finally paid off and this mother can go inside her burrow and lay her eggs. After a little bit of searching, I was able to come across another species of burrowing insect. This species is called the burrowing wolf spider. The burrowing wolf spider will dig itself a vertical burrow measuring from one and a half feet to two feet in depth. This spider doesn't regularly leave its burrow. Instead, it would much rather wait for a passing insect to come within reach. Once the burrowing wolf spider becomes startled, it will retreat into its burrow and stay there until it feels it's safe to come out. Survival tips by Jake! When planning your own journey of discovery, here's a couple of things you should keep in mind. Number one, know the area you are wanting to explore. A little bit of research can go a long way once you're out there. Number two, don't hike alone. The company of a friend is always good, especially if you run into any sticky situations. Number three, carry first aid supplies. It's good to have them and not need them, then need them and not have them. Four, carry a field guide that could help you distinguish which species are dangerous. And most importantly, number five, have fun and enjoy nature. 